It is two months later. Hi, where's Bernie? Oh, she won't be able to get here. She's still with that Mrs. Reynolds, and she hasn't had coffee for two days. I don't understand how anyone can be getting so much better and act so much worse. Well, how do you like the way she clicks her teeth at you? I never said this before, and I know she's a very sick woman, but I don't like caring for her. It makes no difference what one does for her. It's never right. Well, I've tried for the last six weeks, and I still can't like that woman. Okay, we're going to pull you over now. After two months in the tank respirator, Mrs. Reynolds has now been introduced to the use of the shell respirator and the rocking bed. Her tracheotomy is plugged at intervals so she can speak. But the degree of real communication between her and the staff is very slight. She's a demanding patient, and one they never seem to satisfy. When her tracheotomy is unplugged and she's unable to speak, she has developed the annoying habit of summoning staff by clicking her teeth at them. I think I better unplug you now, dear. Well, I finally got time to take care of you. Let me fix your pillow. Can we hold of those teeth and throw them out the window? What is it now, Mrs. Reynolds? Oh, honey, please give me a drink of water. I get so dry. You're always so good to me, and those other nurses are so impossible. I sometimes have to look after the other patients, too, you know. I have to be suction, too, dearie. No matter how hard we try, we just can't please her. She's a spoiled woman, pampered by that old man. And he's on her feet all day, always complaining, and so is she. My staff don't like to take care of her. I have to rotate them with her. Now, what do you know? She wants a shampoo before her husband comes. What does she think this is, a hotel? There she goes with those teeth again. Yesterday, we ignored her and find her cyanotic and almost unconscious. If we suctioned her every time she wanted, that's all we do, but we're afraid to ignore her. When we got in there yesterday, she was blue. It was almost as if she'd done it on purpose. I wish we'd transfer her or get some more help. Here he comes. More trouble. You take care of his complaints today. She doesn't seem to be getting any better. They don't take care of her now. I keep telling him that they don't pay me no mind. Well, there's no need to go in this room. This patient in the first bed around the corner is Mrs. Reynolds. She's been here four months and has got Guillain-Barre syndrome. Medically, our most serious problem is the increasing paralysis of her extremities and her diaphragm. And these have created some pretty tremendous nursing problems, such as keeping her airway clear, and maintaining good skin care, preventing contractures, and keeping her bowels and bladder functioning normally. It's taking a lot of work, and the gals are doing a fine job, but she and her husband don't appreciate it at all. They've been at the staff ever since they got here. Well, let's see the next patient. She complained about Marilyn again. She talks about all of us. I know. You go do your other patients. I'll go see what I can do. She said you left on a bedpan yesterday and forgot her. Oh, we put her on that pan six times and she still didn't put out. Mr. Reynolds, don't you know she's on a thousand calorie diet? If she ate that, she'd have all the calories she can have for the rest of the day. When she didn't get enough breakfast, they, they okay. feed her too fast. Yesterday you brought her a hamburger and a milkshake. You know she's on a diet and she has to lose weight so she can breathe better. You also are well aware of the hospital rules that no patients are to be bought food or drink. Yesterday they wouldn't give me the bedpan. I couldn't wait. I went to bed. Charm, I felt awful. They just don't seem to like me here. I like them. But they don't like me. It seemed to me like every second day I was called on the carpet over the Reynolds case. Things were getting worse month by month. 
even though we were doing everything we knew how to do for her, or so we honestly believed at the time. Well, our dear Mr. Reynolds has now not only gone to the medical director and the hospital administrator, but he's even written the state legislature. The director of nursing service knows perfectly well what you're going through, but she can't give you any more help. We'll have to do the best we can. I've been in nursing 10 years, and I've never had a patient as bad as Mrs. Reynolds. Well, thank goodness we have that new student coming Monday. And she's here to learn about complex patients, and she has more time. That should give you a breather. Why did I ever go into nursing? Why do we go into nursing? What meanings does it hold for us? At the beginning of this term, you all summarized what nursing meant to you. I wonder if you could tell me what nursing means to you now that your psychiatric experience is almost over. Well, it seems that in psych, we've learned more about people. Nursing the mentally ill isn't really so different from nursing people in a general hospital. They get depressed, too, and don't eat. I think the way a patient acts will mean more to me now. I got so busy that I don't think I ever really listened to what the patients were trying to say to me before. Sometimes the physical treatments you give a patient are most important for his recovery. But at other times, it's the way you make him feel that seems to help. The most important thing to me is that I'm beginning to see myself as a person, the way I affect the patient and other people as well, like the staff. Of course, it's not something that you pick up in just a minute, but I really feel like I have a beginning, and I think maybe because of it, I'll be a better person and a better nurse. I just know we'll be able to do a better job now with general hospital patients. I'm really excited about going to Mrs. Jenkins Ward. She's the best head nurse I've ever seen. Not one of us could foretell the events which were to happen now how this stronghold was to be breached by a mild-mannered student with their own convictions about the meanings of nursing. Well, I am Wilson and Jones again. How about you? Dorothy, Frazier, Cook, and Woodbury. Brother, I think you're going to have a bigger job than I have today. Boy, have you got a little on your hands, Mr. Reynolds. Good luck. You'll need it. Hey, there's a real cute resident who'll be glad to hold your hand if you get in trouble. <laughs> Don't call us. We'll call you. Well, let's see what she can do with those psychiatric, tender, loving care principles. Well, hello. Good morning, Mrs. Reynolds. I'm Stephanie Andrews, student nurse, and I'm going to be taking care of you for a while. Oh, dearie. I'm sure glad to have you. Say hello and comb my hair before hubby gets here, won't you? Uh-huh. Oh, here he is now. John, this is my new nurse. Have you ever looked after a case like yours before? Dearie, get me a drink of water. Perhaps she doesn't need our sympathy. These next few weeks will tell. 